Right, let's go back to that story talking about a two-day summit that is underway, a summit on the economic empowerment of persons with disabilities underway in the East Rand. We speak now to Free World Initiative founder and CEO Labohang Mudau. Labohang, let's try that line again, hoping that we have lines. Like you were just speaking about why people with disabilities are still marginalized by South African society and what the conditions are, particularly in the workplace. Good evening. Can you hear me this time? Yes, we, we seem to be having a, a clear enough line. Fantastic. I think we need to go back to the issue that stems from when somebody is told that they will be having a child with disability where they are given the option of termination of pregnancy or not. And it starts as far back as that, that a child with disability is seen as something that is less than anyone with an ability or with a normal ability. So we need to step back as far back as that to show that even within society, we consider somebody with a disability as less able as ourselves. And it starts as far back as that. And that shows that in society, we are not raised to consider somebody with a disability as somebody as a normal being. And that is something that we need to challenge in South Africa. So let's start it off as that. And that leads up to the fact that even in the educational system, even in the workplace system, we do treat people with disabilities as different as other people who are able-bodied. So if we can start it off with that, that will show how we treat people with certain disabilities as different. And this leads to them being treated as less than um, human, if we can say that, and less than able as other people with non-disability. Mm. Now, Hwang, just the terminology, the language used to describe people with disabilities. I know at some point um, uh, the moniker was people who are differently abled, but just how important is that in empowering, uh, restoring the human rights and dignity of this community? You know, the first thing when we want to stop discrimination is to remove the they and us. I think that's the, the first factor. If we consider that 7.5% in South Africa do express some form of a differently able body and 35 being female, that is very important in the fact that us as women are once again uh, experiencing something that will lead us to more dis discrimination. We find 6.5 being male and 11% of people from the age of five having some sort of difficulty and most of them are having hearing disabilities and hearing communication disabilities. So from the word go, from before the age of five, we are finding people who are having challenges with just communication and with communication this leads to so many other things. If we are unable to communicate our needs and our wants, that already puts us on a backdrop. And like you're saying, it is better to call them differently able instead of disabled so we can remove the them and aspect, aspect, aspect of things. But we are still calling them disabled. And I feel it's because of due to the fact that so little of the percentage of South Africans mm. are being discriminated in this way. So let us remove the they and them and let us really see them as people who are differently able instead of disabled. And I want to talk about uh, those kind of problems of difficulties, particularly in the workplace. Is the community then, you know, approached as less than incapable in particular jobs and as active participants in the economy? Do, does it, you know, also create greater barriers? I think we should look at the fact that it's definitely, there has been a challenge. We do not have enough um, uh, interpreters in terms of sign language. We do not have enough braille that is written out. In terms of the workplace, we don't have enough 
um, of the, the, the work page information that is written out in Braille, um, all the books and everything has not been translated into Braille. So we have already discriminated it towards them in, in the terms of they are not getting the information that they need. We are running meetings without, um, within the workplace, we do not have in place these interpreters so that we can make sure that people who have hearing difficulties are catered for. We do not have in the workplace um, a material that has been translated into Braille. So we've already put people who have challenges in terms of communication already on the backdrop. We've already said to them that they are unable to get the communication or the information that everyone else is able to get. So already they are getting into the workplace on the backdrop. That's the first place. Now we're going to physical disabilities in terms of um, ramps. We don't have ramps. We do not have uh, systems in place that ensure that a person who has a disability is also able to take care of themselves. That is the main factor. When a person who is differently able, what we're trying to do for them so that they can le feel less discriminated is put systems in place so they are able to do things for themselves. Yet okay. the workplace do not have these things in place. Um, yes. Lebochal, I just want to ask this question quickly because it's an important point. We saw that in the summit that uh, the community are not only game changers, they are change makers in terms of innovation, entrepreneurship, and not just only for the community, but beyond. They are innovators of solutions. What are we not paying enough attention to and why? as a wider society? You know, I think as able bodies, if I can put it that way, we need to check our own privilege. We come into this world able to hear, speak, walk, talk, and we take this for granted, not realizing that there are people that need a bit of assistance or they need structures in place to enable them to be able to do things for themselves. So there are simple things like ASPRON, the Early Age Foundation, for us to put into place not only for teachers but also for parents to be able to communicate, something as simple as communicating with children, to be able to help them learn and adapt to their environment. As able bodies, we uh, communicate in a way that doesn't include them. So I feel that the, the, the main factor that we need to think about is how do we create an environment so that they cannot feel like it is a this and a them okay. and us environment? How do we create an environment where every single person is communicating Inside, right. is communicating we're going in to have to leave it there. And I do apologize, really, for okay. interrupting you. Labohang Mudao is CEO and founder of Free World Initiative.